What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 24 of Leon Live here in Football Manager 2019. For a second then I almost said the LARM project unintentionally. No, this definitely is Leon Live. We are still in France. Today we're going to be taking on Marseille. It is going to be fifth versus first. I will pre-warn you now if you're getting comfy in your seat ready for today's episode uh, to the fact that this might be a slightly shorter one. Uh, obviously, I always record these videos the night before they go up, kind of the evening. It's coming up to midnight and I have work tomorrow morning, so I can't be up too late. So if you're sat there, you know, ready for an hour of football magic goodness, just, I mean, look down below. You'll be able to see how long the episode's got on for, but... It's probably going to be just a slightly shorter one today. I want to, you know, give you guys some warning about that now. Knowing me, because I don't know when to shut up sometimes, it probably just is an hour long. So if it is like that, just disregard everything I've just said. But yes, my intention at least is not to be uh, up too late tonight. We'll see how that works out for us. I'm sure we've all done that. Uh, you know, playing football manager, you know, one more game before bed, suddenly it's two in the morning and you've got work in six hours. We've all been there. But um, yeah, well, we're continuing, of course, on with Leon. Last episode, some good results all in all, I think. Two wins in the league, a draw against Barcelona. You can see the game that is on the horizon in two days' time, Marseille. Not going to be an easy game at all. And actually, with one game, or one eye, I guess, ahead to this game... Uh, I do want to rest up some of our players. And additionally, we can, of course, bring Fakir back into the team. He was suspended previously for the game against Barcelona. Um, that is not going to be a problem because, of course, that was a European suspension. He has done his time. He has served it. I'm thinking that for this game, at least to start with, we will probably play the more controlling 4-2-3-1 system. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how we've performed throughout this year thus far. Um, kind of switching between the three tactics. I think it's worked reasonably well for us. It's going to be interesting to see how it serves us in this next game because alongside Monaco away and PSG away, I feel like Marseille isn't that far off in terms of being, you know, a game that's equally as difficult. George Lynn, our backup keeper, out for two to three months. That is a pretty unfortunate injury. But... It does reinforce what we did last episode uh, as being a smart decision, and that was signing Joel Pereira, the Portuguese keeper. The only concern I have now is with our Champions League campaign, if Anthony Lopez gets injured, we don't have a goalkeeper. And at that point, we probably need to panic. Anyway, Bordeaux in 15th taking on PSG. We are playing on the Sunday. Bordeaux, do us a favour, please. The fact I'm pleading with them in the middle of September is not a great sign, but we need a favour, please, Bordeaux. Can can they do it for us? Unlikely, it feels like. No, they lost two nil. It was actually two late goals for PSG. I can't. I kind of feel like Paris haven't been that convincing. You know, I feel like they've not been um, super kind of consistent with their play. Even a game like that to only win two nil when they're down to ten men and both goals coming in the last fifteen minutes. Not great. You can see Kanate played well for Lille. Cornet was on the other end of that fixture. He didn't play quite so well. Markovic with a 7.7 .7 rating for Ren, And Shadas playing another 90 minutes for Nim, who, well, they are relegation favourites for a reason. I, I feel like Shadas is going to have a, maybe a tricky year to perform, but hopefully he can, well, get on with things, I guess. Moise Keane, of course, we've agreed to sign him last episode. If you missed last episode, go back and check it out. There was a bit of funny drama. It was the fact our board decided to sign Moise Keane for £33 million. I say funny because I feel like if I don't try and find the funny side of it, I'll probably burst into tears. The overwhelming consensus in the comments, in the YouTube comments yesterday was probably not the best deal by the board. I mean, I don't disagree at all. But I do wonder now if I have to really try and make Moise Keane work as a transfer. Do I have to, you know, drop Rashford down the pecking order in priority? There is going to be an interesting uh, dilemma perhaps come January. Anyway, we're taking on Marseille today. Uh, they've got a few pretty good players. They've got Chanafa Logulu. Uh, that's definitely not how you say his name. But the good kind of playmaker Turkish guy in the centre of midfield. He's very good, isn't he? At free kicks, at least. He used to be very good. In fact, he's still good at free kicks. That isn't exactly a skill you forget now, is it? The rest of their team, though, is very solid. They're not going to be easy to take on. But last season, we did have a pretty good record against them. We're going to go out and at least from kickoff try and control the game. You know, if it doesn't work, we're not having a lot of the ball, if we're not creating a great deal. 
we might then switch to our more direct kind of attacking 4-2-3-1 to see how it works for us. They're playing a 4-2-3-1 themselves, so it's going to be perhaps a bit of a battle of personnel in this game. And I do feel like when it comes to overall quality, we do perhaps have the edge here. But obviously football is not won on pen and paper. If the best team won every single game, there'd just be no point in playing matches, would there? But football is random. Weird stuff happens. And well, maybe weird stuff can happen for us here and we can win 6-0. Although, I'd kind of just take any win. 30 minutes gone here. Not a classic. Not going to pretend it's been a classic. We finally get our first highlight of the game. We've had 58% of the ball, but not done a great deal with it. And actually, it's them on the attack. Ball threaded through to Dimitri Payet, who hits the post. It's cleared out by Tete. Given the fact we're dominating the ball, we're not doing a great deal with it. I'm kind of tempted just to go to the more attacking system. See if we can hold on to the ball, despite the fact we are going to be a little bit more attacking and a little less patient in our attacks. Uh, I do feel like we're about to leave ourselves open a little more at the back here, but at the same time, we should have a little bit more about us going forward. Anyway, nil-nil at half-time, no one really standing out. If we were to draw this game, we would slip down to second. Marseille being in fifth means that we can't really look at them as easy opposition. You know, they are a very, very good team. I want to say on the balance of the first half, we deserve to be winning, but the reality is that we probably don't. It's been a game with so few chances, it's difficult to argue that this should be anything but a nil-nil. That was a really good opportunity for them, however, there. That was a crucial missed header by one of our defenders. Fortunately, whoever the Marseille player was who blasted it over there just kind of crumbled under the pressure, went for a first-time effort that really wasn't necessary. Anyway, it's not been the most feisty of derbies, has it? While it's only picking up the first booking of the game now. I'm going to make some changes. We're going to bring in Terrier on the left. I'm going to bring in Danny Olmo on the right. And Wallace has just been sent off. <laughs> Kill me. Kill me. I mean, right, scrap the tactical changes I was thinking of doing because we've got to, <laughs> we've got to try and make something happen here. In terms of what I'm thinking we do, I'm thinking we switch to a 4-3-2, maybe. I think this is probably our best bet, although I'll be completely transparent with you. I feel like <laughs> Wallace has massively screwed us up here because I was not prepared for this. Right. Well, let's make some changes anyway. It's going to have to be some different changes now with the change in system. So we're going to play Fakir alongside Dembele as a front two. Although, actually, I'm going to drop Dembele, I think, for uh, Terrier. And then we're going to have to bring in a centre-back. It's going to be Marcelo on for Traore. So going with a triple change now. Um, not an ideal situation, really, to have going down a man here. But we're going to try and continue to play positively. We've gone back to the control possession kind of instructions. But ultimately now... Being a man down, if we could just hold on in this game, I'd probably take that. I mean, you can see, looking at the stats, we've been the better team for so long, but the sending off does royally screw us up, and while Payet, with a chance, maybe goes to Lopez, back to Payet. Now with Sotar, who might have a go, it's blocked away. Lopez dinks in, back post, so Campos is there. They take the lead in this game. I want to say it's against the run of play, because I genuinely feel like we have been... At least on par with them. But unfortunately, going a man down has just massively screwed us up here. Maxime Lopez with the ball in. And it's a Campos at the back post. Not a powerful effort. I don't know if the keeper could have done a little better there. I mean, the reality is now, with not a great deal of time left of this game, we might as well just go more attacking. And we might as well at least go for this game. And see what we can do. In terms of going for it, we are somewhat limited, I guess, in our options because we're a man down. Um, we're going to have to go for a more direct style of play. None of this work in the ball into the box crap. Route one over the defence. Let's try and hit them on the break if we can. And in terms of our general play, pressing high, you know, really trying to get in their faces. It's kind of just the last roll of the dice at this point, but we kind of have to do it. There's five minutes left. We're a man down. It's not an easy situation to try and fight to get a goal. If anything, we leave ourselves open at the back, and unfortunately, time dwindles away. Marseille take all three points, and Wallace has let us down massively there. A player who's been a massive part of the first team for years, but just 
a needless sending off, really. You can see Mandanda was man of the match for them in goal, perhaps further kind of just emphasising the fact that we probably should have scored with all the shots we had. Mandanda was very good. We didn't create enough in the way of clear-cut chances. But, um, I don't know, the whole thing was pretty disappointing. I, I find Wallace, and he thinks that's unfair. I feel like getting sent off against our rivals is just not great. He was concerned about it, but it means a lot that we've come to talk to him about his concern, so he's not actually bothered. Well, that's good news, isn't it? I feel like he deserves to have a, a week's wages fined for that. Really, really poor for him. Massively screwed us up in a huge game. And you can see, just looking at the league table now, we are behind PSG. They lost the first two games of the season. They've won their last five. Marseille now equal on points with us, as are Auxerre and Montpellier. Toulouse also going pretty strong. You can see Monaco drew again. They're on nine points. They're actually not that far behind us. Lille leading the pack right now. And in terms of the players for them with the best average rating, Kanate, one of our players on loan at them, has actually become a key part of their team, which is great news because hopefully now he's going to, well, develop. I, I hope he isn't going to win the league with them whilst we struggle and maybe finish second or third. But um, at the very least, he's playing regular first-team football as a key player, and it's a similar situation actually for Markovic over at Orgzair. Great to see two of our young defensive prospects playing for teams who are going very, very strong in the league this year. You can see Mario Ferreira had a very, very good game. Did he get three goals? Did he get three? He did get three. I mean, look at this. Mario Ferreira, take a bow, looking very good on his loan at Socio right now. More of the same, my friend, please, there. What we want to see for sure. Markovic has completed his intensive language course. He's improving a lot over at Auxerre. Obviously made his international debut not that long ago. Very, very keen to see him perhaps emerge into the first team um, next season. I think he will probably be ready. The UK has announced it's about to leave the EU at the end of the year. Oh, God, Brexit. Do I have to deal with Brexit in game as well as in real life? I'm not going to talk politics on my videos, but I just think the whole thing is a shit show no matter where you stand on the topic. And pardon my French, but when <laughs> something's going as bad as this is... I feel like you have to. A shit show is the only word that can be used to describe it. Lucas Romero is a little bit concerned about lack of first team football. He says it's fair that to say he hasn't been playing so much, but he's happy that we had a chat with him. I feel like we can give him a little bit more first team football. To be fair, his squad status is rotation, but it would be not an unfair assessment to say he's not played as much as he could have done for us. We could take him out maybe for Tete. We're we'll gonna have to change things a little bit at the back actually. Uh, with the suspension for Wallace. We can bring Klang on onto the bench. I also think it's worth giving Danny Olmo and also uh, St. Maximin appearances here. I'm also tempted... Hmm. I'm also tempted to give um, DJ some time at striker. Just give him a chance to see what he can do, maybe. I guess if we're going to do that, the argument is that Joseph Martinez should be the player to be given a bit of a chance. I'm going to risk things a little bit here by dropping Depay for the game. We're taking on Strasbourg at home. They are a team who, they're not particularly good. I don't want to say they're bad, but in terms of, um, I guess in terms of where they are in the league, I feel like we should be able to play a rotated 11 and do well. A backup keeper, George Lynn, wants to go. Um, I, I really don't, I don't really don't want to let him go. Okay, well, we didn't get an answer off him. I hope he didn't just kick up a fuss. But uh, he is a homegrown player at club and in the country. It's George Lynn, our backup keeper, who is out injured at the moment for a long period of time. As a result of that, I do kind of just want to keep hold of him if I can. Anyway, I've praised Ndombele's training again there. Lucas Romero's done well in training, so we'll praise his recent training. Perhaps deserves a shot in the first team, so he is going to get that. Wallace, despite his sending off, has continued to improve as well. But given his last performance, I'm not going to praise him. He does not get a cookie from me uh, for his training performances. Because frankly, after after that last game, I'm struggling to look him in the eyes. Anyway, the game here against Strasbourg, as I said, is one I expect us to win. With us having Salzburg in three games time, I do definitely feel like this is a game where we probably should be rotating the team a little bit. Or are you doing that a fair bit in the final third? Um... I feel like we could do it a little more. Let's bring in Awar for Endombele, I think. 
Uh, and at the back, let's give Ferlan Mendy a start instead of Moreno. It's a bit of a gamble to rotate our team like this, but it's a squad game. Every player in our first team is in their first te in the first team because I think they're good enough to step up and play in this kind of game for us. Thinking about our system here, we might want to switch to the more um, direct, kind of just attacking 4-2-3-1. I think this is the kind of game where it's very much suited to us. You know, we're at home. Has Awar really got injured in the first second of the game? He's twisted his knee literally to start the game. A twisted knee is one of those injuries as well where it can get worse and worse. So with that in mind, end on ballet. I know I dropped you from the first team. Well, welcome back to the first team. After five minutes, you are required. Anyway, we're on the attack here. I mean, if Joseph Martinez scores, we're on our feet. He's not really had a chance this year to shine. Might get one today and, well, is that going to VAR for a potential offside? It is. I don't want to celebrate too soon, but Joseph Martinez has the ball in the back of the net. Is it true good? too good to be true? We're about to find out. Is it too good to be true? It's it, It's not too good to be true. It counts. I mean, maybe this is the season where Joseph Martinez just becomes a god for us. Saint maximum of the effort, fortuitous bounce, but make no mistake, he smashes it into the open goal. Confidence builder. We will also make that change to take out our, as I said, a twisted knee. It's not, well, as you can see, he was able to play through it, but it's just knees. I don't like knees. You know, knees can go bad quite quickly. As someone who's had an issue with their own knee, I don't want to keep him on the pitch, especially in a game like this where we have a more than adequate replacement. Anyway, we're looking for another. I mean, Martinez wants a hat-trick now. You know, he's got a taste for goals. Nice build-up play here by Fakir. Goes wide to Mendy. Can he get the ball in? He does. St. Maximin is there. That is what I want to see. Second goal of the season for him. Mendy stepping up at left-back and getting a fine assist as well. And it kind of goes back to that point that I said just before the match. Every player in our team is in the team because I think they're good enough to come in and play in this kind of game at the very least. You know, I see them as good enough for us. And whilst there are going to be games where we rotate our team like this and it might backfire and we might lose, the reality is that with a young squad like we have, I do need to rotate it. It is a squad game. I want to keep players like Lucas Romero, who is very, very talented and a regular Argentine international happy. Um, you know, and if that means a bit of rotation, we've got to go for it. And whilst there is perhaps a risk that there are games where the team just doesn't show up, those games happen regardless of if you rotate the team or not. And whilst they might happen slightly more frequently in games like this, it equally gives players like Mendy, like St. Maximin, a chance to really state their case for the first team. And while Mendy might well be doing that, I noticed Augsera have gone a goal up against Monaco in the top left. Monaco, just their awful start to the season, continues yet to win a game. Nice build-up play here, though. Falls to Mendy, drifts inside, nice touch inside, outside, tucks it right into the bottom corner as well. Three goals up after 40 minutes, perfect. Great response after that game against Marseille. Good to see um, some not-so-regular fixtures, I guess, of the first team. Players who aren't constantly there, just doing, doing the business for us. Anyway, we're messing around with the ball here at the back. Lopez, please get that out. That was needless. My heart can't take it. Can Martinez double his goal tally? I was about to say for the season, but I'm trying to think if he scored more than one goal for us in the entirety of last year. He might be trying to double his goal tally for the entire his entire career at Lyon, the way things are going. Oh my gosh, that's an unfortunate tackle that falls straight to Adrian Thomas. Son, not just Thomas. Mm. I wonder how, what happened to Thomas' mum and Thomas' dad. I bet they're sat in the crowd applauding him. Tears in their eyes. Okay, that was awful. Moving on. Moving on. Unfortunate. Lenglet, great tackle. Full straight to their striker, who would have been miles offside if the pass was attempted to him. But it was our defender who played the ball. So he's not offside. But 3-1 uh, at half-time. That that's pretty good. I'm happy with how things are going, boys. Keep it going now. Keep this momentum on the up, please. We're at home, so you more than expect us to get it. I mean, that looked like a foul by two, so it is given. I don't think he can complain one little bit. Danny Olmo's been a little bit quiet for us. Um, I do wonder, actually, Olmo could probably play out on the right and then St. Maximin on the left. We're currently training. Uh, okay, well, St. Maximin has scored whilst we switch what wing he's on, but we're going to continue with that switch of wings. But um, I want to know how he scored this. Mendy's got another assist, mind you. 
Gives it to Fakir, back to Mendy. I mean, where is St. Maximin going to pick up the ball here? At the edge of the box, one touch, two touch. Lovely finish. I don't know what the keeper was doing. He sat on his arse. It's found in the back of the net. But, yeah, we're going to swap the wings of Mendy and Olmo. No, not Mendy and Olmo. Sorry, St. Maximin and Olmo. I've got Mendy on my mind. Olmo hits the woodwork. Probably needs to score that because that was an open goal. But there's going to be another chance immediately. So maybe a chance for redemption. And on Bele, though, steps up wide of the mark. But we are creating chance after chance after chance. It's what you want to see. With an hour played... I'm actually going to take out Fakir and I'm going to bring in Terrier just because I think the game's done at 4-1 and uh, we have got that big Champions League game coming up. Um, I'm just wondering about um, Toussaint's fitness in the midfield. Actually, it's not too bad, 78% condition. Just wondering if there's any more players in the team who I'd like to um, perhaps look to protect going into the Champions League. But truth be told, fitness is not too much of a concern in our team right now. Um, obviously, we are rotating the team quite a bit here, but in a way that um, you know, lots of our star players are hopefully going to go into that next game fit. Mendy with an ambitious volleyed cross attempt there. Unfortunately, it was dealt with, but the ball not fully out. We want five. There's still 20 minutes left. We could get six or seven if we really want them. Terrier trying to emulate Fakir. Gives it to Lucas Romero. Whips it in. And St. Maxwell hits the word Romero back in two start. I mean, it's deserved. I thought when the woodwork was struck, that was the end of the chance. But no, Toussaint, first goal of the season. That's I want to say it's his first of the of our time at the club, but I'm almost certain he did get one or two last year. But a nice little header for him. Kind of moving up into uncharted territory there. But as a ball winning midfielder on support with the more direct attacking system, there's going to be times like that where we do see him get more involved in the play. 5-1 here, St. Maximin looking for the hat-trick, steps up, hits the woodwork, and the keeper holds on to it. I mean, we've hit the woodwork four times here, it could be so many more. Strasbourg probably should consider them, consider themselves a little bit fortuitous, uh, the fact this game's been so close. St. Etienne having a classic game against Rem, 3-3, it looks like it's going to finish there. And, uh, well, it's going to finish here, 5-1, unless they're going to score one more in the, the dying embers of the game. Thomason steps up wide of the mark. That's going to be game over here. Great little convincing win. Superb performance by a number of players who aren't regulars in the first team. Who, I don't know, they're performing when we play them. Players like St. Maximin, maybe it's time to give him a bit more of an opportunity. This game against Salzburg, though, absolutely critical. Given the fact we are in a complete group of death, we have to be beating the seeded team below us. We are, of course, third seed. Salzburg, on the other hand, they are... Theoretically the worst team, although obviously that's not how football works. Looking at it here, PSG won Monaco Drew against Auxerre. That's going to be a pretty good result for them. Um, you can see there is not a great deal separating the teams. Lil Drew against Toulouse, who themselves are in 7th and are yet to lose a game. Actually, both Lille and Toulouse, the only two teams who haven't... Oh, and Monaco. Monaco haven't lost yet. They've just drawn 7. What a bit of a freak season for them so far. But uh, yeah, what I was going to say is at the top of the table, it's incredibly, incredibly close. Only three to four days out for our, which is good news. Terrier close to triggering a clause in his contract. Shadas played 80 minutes. Markovic played 90. Kanate played 90. Not the best average rating from many of our players in that game week. One player who did have a great game week, though. St. Maximin, I feel like we need to play him a little bit more. Maybe give him an opportunity in this upcoming uh, Champions League game. If I was to bring him in, who would you bring him in for? I, I feel like you'd probably bring Depay into striker and then drop Dembele, who in recent games has been particularly poor. I mean, I'm on board with that as an option. Rashford's still coming back from injury. I kind of don't want to rush him into the team, so I think we'll actually have Joseph Martinez... Uh, plague, of course, scored in that last game last year. Two goals in 19 games. This year, he's got a goal already. Perhaps deserves a bit more of a chance in the first team. It would be fair to say. Groen Birch uh, is continuing to develop. He's also at Augsburg. You can see he's played seven games for them. So he's playing regular first team football at that team, who are very much pushing towards the top of the table. His development, by the way, superb. He is looking delicious, tasty. Going to be a very, very good player, I think, for us in the future. 
I'm just wondering if we need to rest anyone for that upcoming game. Uh, I guess Wallace and Tete off. Well, actually, their fitness is fine. Who, who are the players struggling? Uh, Mendy, Toussart, St. Maximin. Basically, anyone who featured in that game that we just played, we are going to give a little bit of a rest to. Or at least those players who played who are tired. We'll give them two days just to hopefully collect themselves. We are going to be at home for this game against Salzburg. And given how well we played with the more direct attacking system, I'm very much tempted to play that again here. It's a system that is, well, kind of born out of the fact there were some games last year that we just kind of sat back and drew where we perhaps needed just to be a little bit more attacking and a little bit more ambitious from the off. I feel like this game at home is a game where I expect Salzburg to show us a fair bit of respect. And as a result of that, I feel like it's just in our interest to play it from the off. Anyway, you can see here Sigurd Gronli playing for the reserve team. He has been doing an intensive language course. I'll be honest underwhelmed by his development so far at the club of course a very low risk transfer bought in for £235,000 uh, playing for the reserve team who I'm gonna assume are still playing fixtures it looks like they've just have they stopped organizing them they had one not that long ago we'll keep an eye on our assistant to make sure he's still organizing them I mean in terms of our reserves players with potential obviously Cognat we talked a little bit about previously um, during the summer uh, a few players in the reserve team here, of course, players we make available for the reserves. Players like Monty, who's a good backup defender. Kenny Lala, who's our backup right back and left back, kind of third choice in both those areas. Players like Trincao, who is a player who I really, really like the look of. I think longer term, he could be a great little inside forward for us on the right-hand side. There's kind of a debate to be said that he should at least be given a chance to perform in the first team. As the season goes on, I'm sure we are going to have injuries. We are going to have... Um, squad rotation and it's going to have to be more extreme than what we saw uh, previously uh, you know in that last game against Strasbourg apparently Victor Fisher has been recommended as a top target for us a very very good player in football manager terms to be fair to him we will get a scout report on him why not can we ask the board to sign him I don't know if I want the board to sign anyone after the Moise Keane deal I feel like I've been burnt by that forever and I'm not going to be able to forgive them Team of the week. I mean, we have the entire back four in the team of the week, which I guess is pretty good. Six out of the 11 players total also our own. Not going to complain about that one little bit. Anyway, we're gripped by Champions League fever. Extra transfer funds has been made available. We have an extra £8 million to spend. Oh, I mean, they're treating us well, aren't they? Can, can I get some more? Can I ask for some? I can't ask for some more. That would be too good to be true, wouldn't it? I mean, £8 million isn't a tiny amount of money. And considering the Moise Keane signing, I'm kind of pleasantly surprised they've given us any money at all. Our record transfer this window was Lenglet for £8 million, and then the next most expensive was £3 million. That, of course, kind of completely disregarding the Moise Keane deal. We have also got David Diaz, who you might remember we agreed to sign in the summer. He's not joining us for another year and three months. But he looks top draw. 16 years old, playing regularly... For the Columbia uh, under-21s, he is going to be top-notch, I think. I've actually got a few sell-on clauses here that we can look to sell. I don't think we're getting a great deal of money from these sell-on clauses, though, looking at them. 20% of the next transfer clause of data would be made. The board has negotiated a £2 million release clause. I mean, mm, I feel like there's a high chance that he could move on for a profit. I mean... For us to get two million for him, he would need to sell for seventeen million. And I look at him; he's valued at nineteen million, and he's got four years left on his current deal. I can't help but feel like that's probably a player that we should hold on to uh, when it comes to that clause, because I think it's probably going to be worth a little more than that. And with the eight million pounds we've just been given, we don't necessarily need two million pounds for our transfer budget. I'm just wondering, actually, is there, is there anyone who we could realistically sign here? Is there any kind of super unlikely transfer-listed players? I'm thinking a bit like Sancho was the other year. A few big names here, but they're kind of older players who I'm not perhaps quite so keen on. I guess Casemiro isn't that old, but I do like Toussaint. I'm actually curious, how does Casemiro compare to Toussaint? Can, can Toussaint go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best defensive midfielders in Europe? 
I mean, Casemiro is just a better rounded player. The only issue with Casemiro is they want £53 million for him and we definitely can't afford his wages. So there's no point even looking at him. I just wondering as we go down this list, list if there's any other players who could be good, could stand out, could make an impact for us. I'm going to be honest, there's no one There's no one wowing me. In terms of players our scouts have scouted and recommended, Gabriel Jesus is up there, as is Kingsley Coman. I'm going to be honest with their kind of asking prices, perhaps not the most realistic of deals. Perhaps. I don't want to say it too soon. Um, I did notice just a few, you know, slightly different players being recommended here, a few younger players. Christian Kunan, not familiar with this guy at all. He actually looks okay. We'll get a scout report on him. We might as well check him out. Also, this young Polish chap. He's not great. I'm not 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 overwhelmed. I'm not underwhelmed either. I'm just whelmed. Which almost sounds worse in many ways. Are there any big players with contracts expiring in the next year who we should be aware of? Anyone we could go in for? I mean, Eden Hazard, anyone? Anyone for Eden Hazard? I, I feel like he'd be a pretty good addition for us. Probably not the most realistic of deals. Just looking through this to see if there's anyone who's like super top notch. I'm resisting the urge to even consider signing. Um, uh, sorry, uh, Charlie Austin. I have a bit of an affinity for him that some of you guys will be aware of, but uh, I don't think we can justify trying to get him here. I'm going to be honest, looking through this list, there's no one that wows me. Vieto is still that kind of player who I think, uh, I, I wish we kind of had managed to sign you previously. Although if his contract is expiring and it doesn't get renewed, we could be in a pretty good spot to try and get him on a Bosman. St. Maximin wants a new contract. Uh, you've got plenty of time remaining. He's on £26,000. He has been playing away, playing well. I'm just curious how much he wants when it comes to wages now. Mm. Significantly more than I was hoping he was going to ask for, I'll be honest. I'm kind of not wanting to go above £35,000. I'd probably go as high as forty for him. I'm going to stick with thirty-six and see if he'll go down to it. I'll go slightly higher. Okay, 40000 I said was what I was willing to go to. I'm going to go for thirty-eight. I didn't think he'd take that. But he's got three years left on his current deal. And I know he's played well to start the year, but he's not been, you know, a super regular part of the team. Lots of appearances on off the bench. He's not been a nailed on starter, certainly. So I don't feel like we need to be pressured in. Keita Bolde has been performing well. I always thought this guy's name was Bolde Keita. Is it that way round? I guess it is. I guess I've been saying it wrong in my head this entire time. Um, he looks very, very good, actually. Transfer listed by Monaco. Did he play for them much last year? He did, and he oh actually he played on loan for them. Oh no, he went on loan to Inter and didn't play well there. Eleven million pounds is a bit too steep for a player who is undeniably a risk, but we'll keep an eye on him. He could be a good option potentially. Anyway, in terms of our team, I'm going to stick with dropping Dembele. He has been poor, very poor, and that is going to give Saint Maximin a start today out on the left hand side, a chance for him to show on the big stage what he's all about. We're at home for this game. It's against Salzburg. I expect us to beat them. We're going to play the direct system. We're going to play on the front foot. And we're just going to see what we can do against them. They've got some good players here. Haaland is very, very good in football manager terms. Probably worth getting an additional scout report on. Uh, he is just a good, talented player. This guy as well, uh, He Chan, I've seen just always seem to be relatively solid in FM. He's actually the kind of player who I almost want to try out myself just because he always seems to perform above his attributes the other players they've got they've got Hans Wolf who's a very good Austrian playmaker um, one of the best playmakers in the game to be honest this year in terms of youngsters and they've also got Katumi Minamo, uh, uh, Minamino who uh, well he just looks great actually Japanese player full of beans full of pace we're gonna have to be a little bit wary of their wide men I feel like in this game hey Dara as well is another player who I'm very familiar with this year the Malian uh, centre defence in mid. Again, another player we should probably scout. They've got a very exciting young squad. But, despite that, we have an exciting young squad. And I think we have more quality than them. And I want us to show that today. I'm hoping that this is going to be a relatively routine win. We kind of need it to be. We're in this group of death. 
we need to win this kind of game. The, the two games against Salzburg, home and away, we we can't afford to slip up. If we want to even get to the Europa League by finishing third in our group, we need to win this game. Because the games against Bayern and Barcelona we have coming up, they're not freebies. And if Salzburg were to beat us here, it could just come down to the kind of head-to-head -head results and who does better over the two games out of ourselves and them. I mean, the early signs are good. They're yet to have a shot on target after 25 minutes. I say that, I've jinxed it. Set piece, I mean, they've still not hit the target technically. Free kick over the crossbar. A wasteful effort by them. 33 minutes passed, and, well, the only shot on goal they've had was that set piece. It's been anything but a classic here, really, hasn't it? Anything but a classic, although... We've got to be wary. They've got players that have a spark. And while they've got Leder here down the right side, crosses it into Haaland, who's good in the air, wins that towering header, and it is their first shot on goal, and it's found the back of the net. Not good at all. Not good at all. They take a set piece. St. Maximin on the attack duty doesn't track back, and it just costs us. With that in mind, I'm actually going to switch to the more controlling system. We've not had as much of the ball as I'd like. We've also not created a great deal in terms of clear-cut chances. Tactical change hasn't happened yet. We're immediately on the attack looking for a reply. It would put, kind of put us in dreamland if we could reply again. Let's just make sure we don't concede again before the tactical change can come into effect. Wolf here. I guess it's Wolf with it. I don't know. Answers on a postcard. Han Wolf to Minamoto. Hits the woodwork. We boot it clear. I mean, the warning signs are there. Salzburg, they are in the ascendancy before half-time. We're going to cling on in this game. 1-0 feels significantly closer than, well, the potential 2-0 that it could have been. As I said, though, the head-to-head -to -head results here could very much decide if we're even in the Europa League stage. I feel like the board are going to understand if we don't make to the Champions League group stage, given our group. But, I mean, we need to, we need to get... Our nose is ahead in this game and we've looked very, very disappointing thus far. We go to Memphis here. They deal with it well again. I do wonder if bringing in Dembele might be the way to go here. Took a bit of a risk by dropping him. I mean, I say a risk based purely on the fact that in terms of his attributes, he looks good. But statistically, he's been poor. As have we this game. First clear cut chance of the game, finally. The tactical change sees that come about. It took till the 51st minute. Bertrand Traore... I can't help but feel like could have done a little bit better there, though. Really good opportunity. Hit straight at the keeper. Coming up to the hour mark. Another chance here. I was thinking, you know, when it gets to 60, we'd make another change. But we'll wait and see what happens here. Toussaint wins it. Screws it up at the first time of asking. Full set to St. Maximin. Back to Memphis. Nice finish by him. And while Memphis playing as the striker has finally done something. St. Maximin, also a player on a particularly poor rating. End on Bele in the centre mid role has done poor. I'm actually going to bring in uh, Lucas Romero there. Wasn't a particularly pretty goal. Two starts effort initially blocked. But not a bad run by St. Maximin. And an intelligent cutback to the penalty spot. And well, Memphis was there to took it home for his fourth goal of the season. Not a bad goal return by him at all. Now can we kick on? We've brought in Lucas Romero. who's going to give us a bit more steel. A little bit more grit and determination perhaps in the midfield. End on Bele has been... Underwhelming this year. I've said it. Underwhelming is the word I'm using for him. Uh, he obviously almost had a move to Benfica. He tried to force it through. We told him it's not happening. He's not 100% happy. I think that is influencing and impacting his performances. Memphis, you're influencing my happiness. He should have scored there. A clear-cut chance wasted. There is a resulting corner, though, so let's not give up hope yet. Although, hmm... I don't know what to say about that, really. Fakir ne needs to be better. Room for improvement. D minus. Can we see some improvement here? 25 minutes left. Still plenty of time. Ball back post. It's St. Max Amin with it. I mean, is this the change that we do? Do we play Depay as a striker? Do we play St. Max Amin on the left? He's got a goal and an assist now out there. He is turning in some performances. Maybe I'm not going to regret not matching the wage demands that he had. Maybe they weren't so crazy after all. If only he'd held out until after this game to ask for a new contract, I would have given him the keys to the city and a significantly larger contract than what we've offered him. But uh, yes, we've turned this game around now. 73 minutes gone, we find ourselves ahead. 
Depay still not played that great. I'm going to bring in Martinez. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm an absolute mad lad. I know. You can't, can't control me, guys. I'm a nutty geezer. Not bringing on Dembele. Joseph Martinez. He's on form. He scored. That one goal that was a tapping into an open goal. But he's in form. He scored. I mean, it's more than what can be said for Dembele. Let's be honest. I take 2-1 though. I would take 2-1. It wouldn't be a classic. It wouldn't be the biggest victory in the world. But I would not complain one little bit about it. That said, five minutes left. A chance starting. I mean, don't do this, FM. Don't do this. I mean, if you want to give us a third goal, let me relax and enjoy the remainder of this game. I will happily take that. But we do need to be wary here. They're in possession. Ball cleared forward. Nice win by Lengler. But now a little high up the pitch perhaps needs to drop back and get into position. They spread the ball out onto this far side of the pitch. They now dip the ball through to Halland, who is going to be through. Maybe trying to get it in. He does. It goes to Daber and, well, Lopez, who has been our star man, has had a howler there. There is no other way of describing it. Last year's League uh, goals, goalkeeper of the season needs to do better. It falls to the Israeli Daber, who's come on off the bench. It's a ball in. I mean, it's a horrific mistake. We'll switch to more attacking, but I don't really want to overcommit going forward. Five minutes left. Can we find our way back into this game? Another goal conceded here would be disastrous. Make no mistake. Fakir wins the ball. We need a spark. We need a moment of brilliance. I mean, maybe Joseph Martinez is the man to give it to us. But Trantreore marauds forward. Options in the centre blocked. But to Tete now. Dinks it in. Surely not. St. Maximin rebound. He finds the back of the net. I mean, come if the man, come if the hour. Alan St. Maximin, remember the name. Give, give him a new contract, Jack. What were you doing? What were you doing? I mean, he's proved me wrong. I want to believe that the breakdown in contract negotiations has spurred on this performance. He did miss it at the first time of asking. It did take a rebound off the post to fall back to him and a bit of fortune for him to hit the back of the net. But it is 3-2. Maybe I should have celebrated that a little bit more. I feel like I'm just a little bit relieved more than anything. I'm on the come down. I can't get too excited about it. Fakir picked up a little bit of a lower leg injury. Let's hope that's nothing too serious. A great win though. We came back from behind once and then when they pulled even, we pulled away yet again. Fakir injured out for one to two days. I can deal with that. St. Maximin drives us forward. I mean, can we give you a new contract? Hmm, not at the moment. I'm sure before Christmas we can sort that out. You can see we've now got Ren followed by an international break. So with that in mind, I think we will actually do this match against Ren. Uh, in terms of the team, I don't know if I want to play the exact same team, but um, I would like to get this match done today because then I'll play the international break off off camera and we'll come back you know, straight into the next game instead of kind of having to continue forward. Players called up to international duty. Marcus Rashford for England. Glenn Kamara for Finland. Lots of youth players being called up. Depay and Tete both in the uh, Dutch setup is good. Tete had found himself cut out of the team a little bit. But he's been a regular fixture in our team at right back. And I feel like he's more than deserved of um, well a, a call up. Anyway, I'm going to I think concede defeat on our backup goalkeeper. Who's repeatedly asking um, to leave the club. Don't feel like we're going to be able to make him happy. We convinced him to stay on for one more season last year. I think ultimately we've kind of just got to tap out and, uh, well, potentially look to move him on. Anyway, 10 more players called up for international duty, including Fakir. And then the French national team is full of our players. Look at that. Four players called up for the French under-21s. Maxi here called up, which is great to see. Clearly, the games he's playing for Mets in Ligue 2 are, well, I guess making people take notice. In the under-20s uh, as well, we're doing pretty good. I'm just wondering if there's any new 15-year-olds who have been called up. William Bonneau. I mean, he looks pretty good. Let's get a scout report on him and well, become familiar with him. Also, a few goalkeepers here. I mean, we have our own hot prospect goalkeeper, so I'm not so worried about that. But good to see Voicing Verdier called up. He is looking very, very good, improving a hell of a lot. Also, Karim Feli in the team and... Quentin Auger or OJ in there too. Have our under 19, or not our under 19s, have our reserves continued to get friendlies organised? They have. Well, that's good news at the very least. 
I mean, in terms of our kind of best young players, if we just look at our under 19s, who, who's doing the business? Malvin Bard. I mean, you're good, but you're not great. I mean, he, he's pretty good, but he, I'm not super excited about him. Florian Bastide has done well since he joined. Of course, we um, had our intake, and we had some good players here. Loria Ball has improved a hell of a lot. I am very excited about this guy. He was kind of the pick of the bunch, uh, pick of the bunch in our last intake, as far as I was concerned. Elian Durand was also hyped up. He's improved a decent amount too. Just great to see all these youngsters. You know, they are actually developing. Hopefully, they are going to live up to the potential that I have in my mind for them. Anyway, we've got this game against Stad René. Can we get a result? You can see here, Ferreira, another assist to his name. He is in fine form. Maxi also playing well for Mets. 7.6 average rating for him. I mean, I'm, I'm liking the look of Mario Ferreira. He is improving and he is playing a lot and playing well. Granted, it is the league below us, but for a player who we brought in for peanuts, a couple of hundred thousand pounds, I'm happy. Awa is improving a lot, which is great to see. Please keep that going, Awa. Please, please, please. I can't ask you more. Just continue to do your thing in training. I feel like he is the Fakir successor. Just curious, actually. Is he still unhappy? He's still wanting to leave the club. He wants a new contract. You know what? With the increased um, transfer budget, I am kind of inclined to want to try and get these players... On new contracts, but they are asking for way too much in the case of Awa. I'm happy to go. I'm happy to go as high as 50, but I'd like to get it nearer 45. Come on, 475. Do me a favour here, Awa. Thank you. Right, so he's going to get a new contract. Say Maximum wants a new deal, but he's not that happy with the deal that we've got offered. Uh, Fakir wants to move to a stronger squad. I mean, our team has potential, Fakir. Stick it out. We will be as good as you want to be. Is Endon Bele still unhappy or is he less unhappy? He's starting to feel like he deserves a new contract. Hmm. Our, uh, oh, actually, I guess I can't get Endon Bele to talk to himself. Can we get... Who's an influential figure? Toussart. You're my man. You are my man. Can you... Um... Can you go and talk... Oh, actually, we can't even get him to talk to Dembele. I was going to get him to talk to... Not Dembele, sorry. Um, Endombele, I was going to get him to talk to. Endombele and Dembele gets confusing at times. I was going to get him to talk to Endombele and talk him about the contract leave, but that ain't happening. Right. Let's go into this next game. In terms of the team, Fakir has passed a fitness test. I kind of feel like against Ren, we can probably play without him. So we'll give Awa the start. Additionally... And bele has been pretty poor, so I'm going to bring in Lucas Romero at box-to-box -box midfielder, I think. And Moreno at left-back hasn't had the best average ratings as of late, a 6.92 for him. So with that in mind, we'll make a change there as well. And we will see how we go. Dembele on the bench probably isn't going to be the happiest player in the world. I did notice that Bertrand Traore has not been particularly great this year. I am wondering about just playing St. Maximin out on the right. It's a position he's played for us fairly frequently. You know what? We'll bring Dembele back into the team. Going to give Traore just a little bit of a rest, a little bit of rotation for him. Uh, in his last few games, he's not been in the finest of forms. His average rating on the whole is top-notch. And if you were just to look at the raw numbers, they're very, very good for the year. But that's kind of an indicator of how good the start of his season was. It's difficult to justify um, kind of dropping St. Maximin given his form. So with that in mind, someone has to give way. And unfortunately for Bertrand Traore... It's going to be him. Anyway, let's see what we can do. It'd be great to end today's episode with another win. We're going to play the direct attacking style of play. What a result that was, by the way, in the Champions League against Salzburg. Massively, massively kind of crucial for our season to get the win there. I forgot. I didn't actually check what the other results were in the group. Should we do that now? Let's do that now. Let's distract ourselves from the fact that they've just taken the lead. I'm kind of hoping it was a draw. That would be the ideal result. Uh, looking at it here, Bayern beat Barcelona, which is interesting because, of course, we drew against Barcelona. Potentially puts us in a situation where it's going to be more than likely, more than likely now at this point at least, ourselves and Barcelona fighting it out for that second kind of play spot. I feel like Bayern are going to be tricky for us to beat. 
Of course, we're going to go out there and do our best, but we can't, you know, get too carried away, I guess you'd say. Start of this game's been poor, but I want to stick with this system at least for a little bit longer. Maybe a chance here. Two start, edge of the box, hits it. That is what we needed. That's really what we needed. A bolt from the blue. If Toussaint's header earlier for his first goal of the season wasn't the most flashy of goals for a centre mid, that was a significant step up. Nice bit of build-up play. Awa trying to pick out, um, I think it's uh, obviously Depay there. Dealt with well by the defender, but kind of headed, I guess, into danger. It fell to Toussaint. Probably wouldn't have backed him to bang it in from there. But bang it in, he most certainly did. What a finish that was. 30 minutes gone. Not the best performance. Not the best. Let's go for a shout demand more. Six minutes before half time. Can we get that goal that would drastically change my team talk? The answer, a resounding no. It's not going to happen. At half time, you'd probably say you ran a, mm, maybe been the better team, which is not the best thing to be saying, I feel like. Awa on a 6.5 hasn't been great. Dembele on a 6.3 has been even worse. I realise I should probably have Rashford on the bench, but at the same time, with him being loaned in, I'm kind of tempted to rotate things around. We'll give Joseph Martinez a bit of a chance here. Given the fact that Dembele isn't scoring and Martinez, yes, he scored one, but he's not been at the races necessarily. He certainly not wowed me with his appearances so far. We are in a position now where I think Rashford probably is in contention to you know, at least be given a start at striker to see what he can do. They've got a set piece here. Lovely stop by the keeper. I mean, Lopez, you might have just made up for that previous howler. Now can we hit them on the break? That's another question. Memphis, options in the centre. Attempted tackle is failed. Ball back post. Just about dealt by them. What a stop that was by Lopez from the free kick, though. It wasn't right into the top corner. It wasn't, you know, perfect placement, but he had to get to it. Another set piece for them here. I mean, it's another set piece goal. It's another corner that they've scored from. I'm going to go to our controlling style of play. It might be a little bit too little too late. I'm going to bring in Fakir as well for our. I don't really want to watch another corner go flying in. I need to demand more from the boys. Switch to our controlling style of play, but I'm going to tell the players to play more attacking. Truth be told, we've been absolutely awful this game. Mendy has been just trash, basically, at left back. I think we have got to push our fullbacks on a little bit with 12 minutes left here, as much as we have switched to a more conservative system. 10 minutes left to try and find something. Just wonder if I want to go more direct with the time we've got. I feel like we've just got to stick with our game plan here. A loss, I mean, I'm going to be honest, it would be disastrous. It would be disastrous. Even a draw would be subpar. It's kind of what we're seeking out. And if we were to get it, it would be against the run of play. It's just been an awful day at the office. For Keir, since we brought him in, hasn't had an immediate impact. Cue him to maybe score now. That would be ideal. Maybe a chance here, though. St. Maximin, what a run. Hits the woodwork. I mean, he almost was bailing us out again there. And unfortunately, time just trickling away. 20 seconds left for us to get something. It's going to be the very last kick of the game if we do score. Ball whipped in. I mean, that is just... A silly foul by Lucas Romero. Gets a, a yellow card, but that is game. 2-1 to Rene. I shouldn't have played another game. I should have I should have stuck to the shorter episode that I said I was going to do. I thought, one more game before the international break. One more game, too many. Hopefully PSG slipped up, but the harsh reality is that a game like that, against 16th, we should be beating them comfortably, and they have outplayed us off the park. The good news is Monaco have drawn again. They've now drawn eight of their first nine. Lille drew as well near us, so they're not pulling away. And we are still within touching distance um, of PSG. In fact, we've dropped down to fourth. It's actually Auxerre who have gone up to third. Ironic that two of their first team players at Auxerre are our own. Including Markovic, who had a very good game. Shadas and Kanate not doing too bad either. I mean, suddenly the games on the horizon are huge. We've got Auxerre in third got Bayern, we've got Nice in 12th, and we've also got PSG who are top. I imagine we'll be doing all four of them and even potentially the game against Bayern next episode, which uh, well, we need to book our ideas up and start performing better in. A few let-offs, I guess, with the, the comeback. Disappointing result against Marseille, although the sending off is a tad unfortunate. Against Rene today, 
again, I want to say a tad unfortunate. It's only our second loss of the season. It's not the end of the world. They scored two corners, which is uh, a little bit hard to take, I guess you'd say. But we're still within touching distance of PSG, although the gap of four points is notable. It isn't goal difference, which is the difference at all, of course, because we are that extra point behind. I need to go away and think about things. I, I feel like it's a tad of bad fortune as much as anything. When you actually look at the kind of general ratings, players are performing well. We've just had a few bad days at the office. We've got an international break now to try and clear our head and hopefully come back strong for that Auxerre game, which hopefully I will see you guys for next time. But anyway, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. This wasn't the shorter episode I planned. I am going to go to bed. I hope you have a wonderful Friday and I will see you guys again soon. There may not be an episode tomorrow, just as a heads up. Just remembered, network game upload probably happening tomorrow. So we might have a Leon Live episode as well. You guys will have to wait, I guess, and keep your eyes peeled to find out. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I see you guys for the next episode, whenever that may be. Take it easy. See you soon. It is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.